guys, and welcome to Smells Like Teen Angst. Today, we are going to be talking about Gossip Girl Season 2, Episode 2. Let's do it. Welcome back. And as always, I am here to discuss these things with Kiki and Sean. Sean, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean from Lost in the Real, and we are back for some more Gossip Girl shenanigans. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> gossip about Gossip Girl. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. The gossip and the gossips of the Gossip Girls. Uh, so, <laughs> Ikeo has dropped the first two episodes together. So, look at it. You get to see us two times in a row, everyone. It's very exciting. Um, the biggest question of last episode was, where is Obi? Obi wasn't there. He's the Where's Waldo. Episode two answers that question. But let's just talk about this cold open little bit. It's what I call like the mini setups that they give us at the top. Um, the thruple looks like they're in an open relationship. Like Max is hooking up with people and everyone, I was like, oh, okay. So this is how they're, they're doing this. We find out that Obi is actually alive and still here in town. Zoya is having Thanksgiving dinner with Shan and her family. And Gossip Girl has an article written about it that it is no longer relevant because it did not cover the debutante ball. Mm. And apparently that was a big no-no. And also a surprise to me. Like, I don't know how she wouldn't have covered that in any way, shape, or form, especially with the fight and everyone was posting everything. But wasn't she busy? Yeah. I'm like, she was busy. She was. She's not letting Jordan or the other teacher, like, the girl teacher touch it. She's like, it's just me. So maybe this is her lesson that she needs at least one other helper. Yeah. Right. Maybe she needs a minion. Um, <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Julian is still trying to be above the drama. She's like, we're going to be like Elsa and we're going to let it go. Um, but she is back on the rise and trying to avoid this fight war with Monet that Monet is so desperate to have this like back and forth with her that I think it's really funny. And like Monet takes over this school, forcing her to like be a part of it. And I think it was Luna who's just like, look, you created her. This is what you did. Mm -hmm. You created this monster. So are you going to do anything about it? And Julian's like, no. How do you guys feel about this like passiveness that Julian is just like, no, I'm not. I got to be better. Uh, okay, faker. <laughs> like, uh, I've, I've, you know, I'm like permanently over Julian. Yeah. I just need her to be the villain that she's supposed to be. Like, you're supposed to be the HBIC. Own up to it, bitch. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> you know, it's it's exhausting when she's like, I'm on my kick. I'm on my up. I'm a good person. I feel like this is a constant cycle with Julian. It's like, I'm trying to be a good person. Now I'm going to be a villain. I'm trying to be a good person. And it, we just keep going in circles with her. Like, just figure out that you are, right, the HBIC, and just be that. Yeah. That doesn't mean she has to. I think she, that doesn't mean she has to be a terrible person. And I think right. in Julian's mind, that means she has to be a Monet. She has to be the Blair Waldorf. But what we love about those characters is while they are the HBICs, they're also lovable and charming. Mm -hmm. And we care about them because they're vulnerable. Correct. Which we haven't really got there with Julian yet. No, not at all. And I feel like that's that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see um, growth. <laughs> what do you mean Kiki we had no growth all of season one <laughs> we're two episodes in and we still have no growth it's fine it's fine um Zoya is still one of my least favorite characters too and especially in this episode um she keeps lying to her dad about hanging out with Shan and she's like sneaking into her own house which I think is weird and Julian like it's like a boyfriend but it's just like a best friend because Nick has issues with wealthy people. And I'm just like. Yeah. This was a really forced conflict with me. I, I just like, I get that he might not love, you know, the fact that she's hanging out with rich people, which we just found out that she 
uh, Shan is ri- you know, rich in the last episode. And all of a sudden we find out that she's been hanging out with Shan's family all the time and are trying to hide it. I just feel like it's a conflict that's not really that big of a conflict. Well, I was I wanted to ask you guys about this because am I misremembering? I remember like in season one that he wanted her to blend, right? Like he wanted her to make friends with these people. Right. So I'm just like, whoa, how do we go so full circle of no, don't hang out with rich people even though you're at this rich people school? Like, yeah. Isn't it better that she has a friend who's not all wrapped up in like drama and like messed up geist, you know, like yeah. what is Shan done? I don't think Shan has any like, you know, demerits on her friendship no. list. No. She's not no. like Julian and Audrey and this cycle of mess that comes yeah. with her sister, you know? Yeah. You think that Nick would be happy that she's hanging out with someone that doesn't seem to be as big of a problem as her sister. Yeah, who isn't under her sister's thumb like that, you know? Yeah, someone yeah. who didn't even tell her she was rich. Like someone who, like, the like as, as Shan said, it's the least interesting thing about me. Right, and that's oh, yeah. great. Why, why are we upset? Why are we mad? Like, I'm, we, I don't, I don't get it. I need them to explain it. And they, this episode, they have not. So I'm no. just like, what is going on? And well, like, and the thing with the paper plates and how all of a sudden he was like, oh, like you're looking down upon us because we're poor. Yeah. And I'm like, what is Nick? All what is what is up Nick's butt? I this know episode? <laughs> this episode, like, or are you talking about the dinner? It's like, so. The, Everything gets set up per Gossip Girl normalness. And then, like, the big thing is everyone's at a dinner of some kind. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think that's so – let's talk about their dinner. Because as you said, like, he – Zoya is like, let me show you. Because she gets caught by Gossip Girl. And her dad, like, every other adult in the planet is watching Gossip Girl on their Mm -hmm. Instagrams. And she's like, let me just show you they're amazing. And, unfortunately, Shan's parents do something real shitty. And they – like make themselves seem poor. They're drinking out of red solo cups. They're dr- eating on the paper plates. They put away the good china, you know. But he doesn't make it any easier. He's such a dick during right. his dinner. Yeah. Before we launch into this though, like uh kudos to the writers because they took like what was by far my favorite episode last season and gave us like a million dinners in one, which yeah. Fun. We love the drama of sitting around a table. Very real housewives. It's yes. Enjoyable. But um this dinner in particular, I had such an issue with because mm-hmm. why do paper plates and solo cups make you poor? <laughs> um right. I thought it just made you lazy. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I was right? Like, like uh, paper plates cost a lot of money. I don't, are they cheaper in other states? Because, like, they're really expensive in California. Okay. <laughs> wow. People are watching from other states. I don't know our viewership that well, but paper, <laughs> like, a pack of 50 paper plates is like $10 out here. Like, I'm buying paper plates when I'm really trying to save my life mm-hmm. and not the planet because. I'd rather wash a dish than spend that much money to eat. Like, and that's like the <laughs> paper plates. That's like those thin paper, like the thinnest like of thin, the where you got to stack like five of them so that the grease like, doesn't fall through. Super thin, nasty, like taco truck plates mm-hmm. are that expensive. You know, you like, those good Dixie plates. They're gonna cost you twenty five dollars for fifty of them. Like exactly. that. You want that chinette? That costs money. Okay, so like, don't don't talk down about paper plates <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just like i'm like y'all made mistakes but honestly he that was never gonna go well because he was never even open to it right no. he wanted to hate this family from jump especially wow. because the idea was his daughter was supposed to go to this super exclusive restaurant and then <laughs> never mind plans change so we can eat at home and then they're eating like not even a home cooked meal he's like okay cool like play me out like trash then like yeah. they the parents shouldn't have gone along with it at all no. i think he's taking out his insecurities about davis and like yeah. how davis is giving him money and bought his house and did all and he's taking it out on his daughter and he i'm like how do you not see that yeah anyway mm, he, nick's being a jerk yeah <laughs> Um, Obi is, has been shacked up with Grace. 
this whole time, this whole time, this whole time. <laughs> uh, and uh, like Gossip Girl catches him at like Dave and Buster's. <laughs> like, like, Where are we? Why are we here? Um, and so we're like, oh, I'll be spotted. And like, I get why he's avoiding everyone. Um, you know, the, the girls got her drunk and plastered her all over the internet. And, you know, like, he's like, I'm protecting my girlfriend now because y'all are jerks. And I don't trust you with her. And he just wants to be in like his happy little bubble. Good for him. Yeah. And being at that school, I get it. Like, no matter what, you're wrapped up in the drama. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's his friendship group. So he's just like, mom's not going to let me transfer schools. Might as well just ditch because. Yeah. Whatever. I still think that Obi is like the least interesting character, though. And no matter what they do with Obi, he's going to remain the least interesting character. I agree because <laughs> lame. <laughs> I, mean, I still haven't figured out like if Obi's supposed to be our Nate, why isn't he like so much better? You know? Hey. I feel like he's supposed to be a weird mix of Dan and Nate. Like he's the mm. he's the lonely boy, rich, popular kid. And it's it's not know. working. It's not I working for me. It doesn't work because I don't see the attraction there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one and like of course these are children like I shouldn't really be attracted to them anyway but I'm also like he's not a hot child well, and, like Max the actor who plays Max yeah Max is like the Chuck Bass of Chuck Basses okay like yeah. Max gives it to you okay not like, Thomas Doherty, let's be real Thomas Doherty is like 30 right so yeah yeah, yeah. he's an adult yeah he's an adult <laughs> I mean they all have he's to be beautiful <laughs> We all have to be like of age to, for this show to even happen anyway, you right. know, but I'm just saying like he sells the sex right. appeal, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. he sells the sex appeal. I don't get that from Obi. No. Obi feels like so closed off and like not really participating in what this show is in general. Right. And then they give him this Grace character that he's with. And the she's one interesting thing about her is she turns into a batshit crazy lady when she drinks. But then when she's not drinking, she's like plain Jane. And then you put those two together and it's like watching paint dry. Yeah. Oh my and, God. The, and the cadence of her voice is grating. Mm -hmm. I don't like. Yeah. Every time she's on the screen, I'm like, I can't. Yeah. Please stop talking. <laughs> She does have one of those voices that's like you can see how it could be tuned out by people. Um, <laughs> yeah. But also, like, I don't see any point to her yet. We're not giving her anything. This is her what second, second episode? Point? Yeah, I was like, well, she was in a couple of last season. Yeah, so she was like in a couple last seasons. So it's like her third appearance. Like, we know she's at like homeschooled and whatever has friends at rivalry schools and all these things. Like. You, we know she's a part of this world in some way, but like mm. we don't know enough about her to be interesting and we don't yeah. try. Right. Like her and Obi can be their like boring, pretentious prepsters off in their own world. We don't care. They're not here for the drama. They were never having fun anyway. I just want to have some fun. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it was a weird choice for them to not show Obi at all in the first episode and mm -hmm. then have him appear in the second episode and then not really do anything with his character. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the, the they got to do something because if Obi and Grace were both not on the show anymore and they showed this with the first episode, no one would care. Like, yeah. they don't add yeah. anything yet. Yeah. It'd be better if they were like off in freaking Kosovo, like a gallivanting. Yeah. Living you their know. best homeschooled life while vacationing in the Galapagos. Like <laughs> Exactly. Give Sorry, us that. That way. Give us that. But like don't bring them in an episode two and then have them still be like, and we're asleep. We're boring. <laughs> because we're so boring. That's exactly how it feels. I know. Um Thomas Doherty is 27. Just had a okay. I looked, I looked it up. Uh, but speaking of him, I my little heart, like not only are Aki and Audrey the worst to him that he's having to fake. Oh this relationship and fake hooking up with people, but his, he's sitting at this table with his dads who are going over the assets that they're going to split up. And I'm just like, I just want to hug him. Why, how have they written him so well? 
and the right. others they've just re- you can tell he's their favorite like oh, they love him they have they love him he's their favorite um the teachers so we've got the new teacher and then this episode we learn that he is the one who recorded the fight between Monet and her mother um and Kate is just pushing him to send it to Gigi he's like she's like send it just send just send it we're gonna we're gonna send this right and like he's like no I'm gonna hold on to it um because he wants to blackmail the headmistress and it's like okay and then he said this line to her and I went does he know that Kate is gossip girl because he says that's one lie I'll never tell Mm -hmm. and I went For someone who doesn't like Gossip Girl, you sure do know her phrasing a lot, sir. Sir? <laughs> sir? <laughs> anyway, that, I just like that moment happened. I was like, he knows or he's fishing. Like, Because at this point, we don't really know why he's there, why he's like what the new teacher is going to be. We just know he's going to cause some drama. And him right. dropping that little line, I'm like, ooh. Also, awesome. no one really gave him the lowdown and he's been gone for two years. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay years gossip girl has not existed since our og blair savina vanderwoodson chuck bass you know show yeah. this is a whole new thing that um tavi's character kate created you know to bring back because the kids were in check at that point so it's just like he comes in and he knows about he everything knows too much he, he knows, knows much. too much and none of you guys are like that's suspicious. That's weird. <laughs> like, yeah. I will say that I, I like this character. I think he's interesting. He's adding a layer of intrigue to like the teacher aspect uh, that I like. Whereas I think they tried to do that with Rafa last season and that went, <laughs> you know, so this character I'm interested. I want to know what he's up to and, you know, his, his uh, relationship with Kate and, their kind of camaraderie with each other is interesting. So I- I'm excited to see what happens with him. Yeah, same. Um, we now have Pippa, Bianca. I have names for her minion, for Monet's minions now. Our transfers from another school. They're new at Co- Constance. Constance. I was like, what's the name of this school? It's fine. Um, and now they are passing out flyers for the new school rules because Monet is the HBIC Everyone has to is like getting write ups. Everyone is having to wear a uniform again, uh, and she's like, you know, there was no hierarchy before, and that led to chaos. And she's trying to get Luna, and Luna absolutely refuses. She's like, no, this is not my game. This isn't right. And she's another character that I really like, and I need her to be more than what she is right now because that's all it is. It's been the first episode in this one of Luna being like, well, I'm with Julian. The end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd love for her to be more of a master manipulator because when she does have scenes and when she does give advice and she speaks, we realize like, oh my God, she's beyond intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. She gets it more than anyone. She understands the world. So like, why haven't we given her more substance? I know. I need it. She's a background character that deserves so much more than being a background character. Like the actress herself, I think is definitely, I think we talked about this last episode. She's definitely one of the better performers on the show. And like you said, she's intelligent. And I just want to see, I want her to have a better arc than what she's given. Mm -hmm. I need that. Please. And thank you. Like (laughs) who, who do we have to get rid of? To do that, I will be okay. I'm okay with it because it's not going to be Max. (laughs) So say goodbye. Um, So then we get into the back half of this episode and we get this montage of conversations, which, yeah, I loved it too. I thought it kept the energy up. Yeah, I thought it was a really fun device um, that is setting up multiple dinners, which Kiki, you mentioned the dinner of last season was your favorite, that Thanksgiving dinner. It was epic. Yeah. And so we now get mini dinners. We already talked about um, Zoya's, which I, we don't need to talk about again because no. Nick's an asshole. Um, Grace is forcing Obi to have dinner uh, with his friends. Like Max's parents are trying to have dinner with this like super racist old white lady about this park. And um, his dad asked Gideon, I always forget the other dad's name, uh, to like be normal and like not himself. And he and Gideon does it. And I honestly, mm. I'm like. It's because he still loves him. Anyway, um, 
Shan gets Zoya out of the house. We talked about that. Um, we got Monet and Julian and Luna who are going to do this like dinner thing that Julian turned down, but Luna convinces her to do. I don't really understand what it was, but it's a thing no. like a write up of something in a magazine. Um, and then Kate and Matt are going to crash a dinner party at the headmistress's house to confront her about the bribery and this video and all of that. And I was like, oh, um, the fun thing about Max's family dinner is that he doesn't know there's a dinner downstairs and he's got this <laughs> weird orgy happening in order to prove that he is a single man who still likes having sex with people. So I'm uncomfortable, this scene. Like, when he takes all three of their fingers and, like, puts them in his <laughs> mouth, I was like, Gossip Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. I was just like, okay, we're going there. But also, girl, the entire time I'm just like, when does the whole dinner party get ruined by the orgy upstairs? Like, yeah. oh my God, because he's like, this is going to be the longest, the slowest. Like, he's trying to build it up. Like, it's going to be the most amazing. Like I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's texting freaking... Uh like Audrey and Aki, like come bail me out. Come okay. bail me out. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I was like, confused about that. Like, did, was he just, he wanted to set it up so then they could save him from it. Like, right. So like, it wasn't him turning everyone down. I don't really understand it either. They weren't very clear on for me, right. how that was going to go down. Like, why was Audrey going to interrupt it? Like, right. why were they going <laughs> to, if they're yeah, like, like, proven he's yeah. not in a relationship with them. Is this how they're coming out as a couple? Like, wait, no, we actually want you. Like, yes. you can't sleep with other people. Like, I didn't know what was the point going on here. Mm -hmm. Like, shouldn't it be if they're trying to throw off a trail to let him just do this? Right. Like, also, why would you agree to this? Like, right. such a, uh, they treat him like garbage they and do. I don't love it. And it makes me hate Aki because I really liked Aki in the first season. It makes me you hate do. Aki. Already hated Audrey. Hate her even worse. She's mm -hmm. the worst. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't love it. So while that chaos is happening, you've got Monet and Julian at this fancy event, which Julian is still manipulating, but she's the good girl. She's not playing into Monet's thing, but she is. Because like she sent the girl the wrong questions. Because right, Monet's questions about herself were supposed to be like pop culture and fun, and instead it's like what you would ask Miss America like, on like the war in Ukraine. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> God. Oh, and then you get Julian who gets to answer her questions flawlessly. I was like, do you not see you have tipped your toe? Right. Just like dive in, girl, mm -hmm. dive in. Um. And this, so this all this whole spread gets ruined, and then Monet confesses all of this. That she's like, "I'm doing this. I'm pushing you. I need you because I'm the Blair. I need my Serena. There isn't any. This doesn't matter unless you know we have this." And she's trying to get her to like push her into a fountain, and Julian's like, "I'm not going to do that." And so she throws herself into the fountain, and Julian tries to catch her. So if you look at it, you catch the end of it, and it looks like Julian pushed Monet into this fountain. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about this reveal? <laughs> that she, it was all Monet, like, coming up with this, like, you know, like, the war between the two of them. I didn't really see it as a reveal because she's been saying it the whole time. Right. You hmm. know, so I'm like, her confessing this to Julian, I'm just like, yeah, we know. You're trying yeah. really hard to do this. So it wasn't a surprise to me. And I don't think it was as much of a surprise to Julian as she made it out to be. Right. Yeah. And I think as much as I wanted that Serena and Blair dynamic last season and how I felt like they were trying to give us that between Zoya and Julian, which I was like, I don't like this because they're related. Like it doesn't work related and fighting over a man. It's just nasty. Mm -hmm. But like adding Monet, who is a character that like doesn't really stand, you know, on her own two feet. It's just weird. I'd rather have Julian fight with a completely new character. Mm -hmm. um, maybe fight with Grace. Maybe fight with, you know, just someone else waltzing into Constance in general, trying to make a name for herself. Because Monet being like, you've squandered what I've given you, and now I'm taking it back. Yeah. Um, it's kind of just bullshit. Because, okay. like, if you could do it, you would do it, right? Like, 
I, I would love to see it with Julian being all in. Yes. Yes. Because I think that could actually be interesting, but Julian is refusing. And mm-hmm. so I'm as frustrated as Monet is right now, <laughs> you yeah. know? So Kiki, are you saying you're not as gung ho about Monet being the villain anymore? Like you were last episode. I'm saying that Monet's whole setup in this is weak. Mm. Like, if you're going to be the villain, you should have came prepared. You should have known yeah. how this was going to go. And, like, Julian dragged her during that thing, you know? Yeah. I was yeah. like, is she supposed to be like, I orchestrated Julian, I created her. If you created her, if you can do what she does, you should have known that this could have happened. You should have had list upon list of schemes to make sure you stayed on top and she had none of it. And that's why I'm like, Luna is actually the brains. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Guys. Yeah. It was never Monet. Cause like how mm-hmm. else is Julian 12 steps ahead of her? Mm-hmm. Like not even like a step or two, but like a, a million whole, steps. A miles, a miles ahead of her. Like wow. Julian literally was like, let me just put you back in your place. And she had no retort for it. Yeah. Other than I'm going to fake that you push me in a fountain. <laughs> gossip girl she needs the drama yeah um, matt and kate at this dinner like get themselves in they're like searching through the miss head mis- the head teacher headmistress um like all of her stuff and they get caught and i love that kate starts to lie and matt's like we're not lying this is <laughs> why we're here and the reaction is like she's relieved. Yeah. She confesses this whole story about how she's been living in a gilded cage that, you know, they own her and they've owned her since day one. And there's never been anything she could do. And she's like, oh my God, it's finally out. I'm going to be free. And Matt's like so unsatisfied with that. And he's like, nah, I'm not going to free her. Let her live in her, like in her own little hellscape. <laughs> yeah. And Kate's like, uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna i'm gonna out her it's fine yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, just, the, I just thought that was so interesting that he was willing to be like oh i have this great thing well no i'm just gonna hold on to it now because i didn't get what i wanted like he was right. expecting her to be upset and to fight them and it's it's like one of those things you ever like get yourself like oh i'm ready to fight and then the person like apologizes and you never get to like let out those feelings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like that's where he was at. He's like so unsatisfied. Yeah. And he's like just riling Kate up, yeah. which is so annoying because I'm like, uh, if you know so much about Gossip Girl and like Kate has already talked about it and all these other teachers who used to be her minions have, like, you know that they care. So holding on to juice, like this juicy, juicy juice mm-hmm. must be so hard for them. Why are you making them do it? Yeah. <laughs> Sir, that's suspicious. Yeah. He's that's just suspicious in general, though. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just need more. I need more little they're gonna they're gonna give us like the tiniest little nuggets in every episode until it finally is revealed. And I'm okay with the nuggets. Keep the nuggets going. I don't need yeah. at, like some reveal in next episode. Like just keep it going. Yeah. Building the tension, like because then <laughs> it le- it lets us like have fun with it and you exactly. know make up our own theories and stuff. Like the whole little gossip girl line, I was like, he's here. Something with gossip girl is why yep. he's here. Okay, we'll mm-hmm. figure that out. Um, in the end, we've got that the, our little triad, our little thruple, officially comes out on gossip girl finally. Because, oh, I skipped this. The whole chaos of the dinner at Max's house when Audrey and Aki show up. And now they're all at the table. And then, like, one of the orgy people come down. And, like, everyone their mom, like, Audrey's mother shows up with dresses for Gideon. It just became, like, this weird chaos circle at this Our dinner. from the Food Network's there. Like, everybody's there. And they're all, like, sitting down at this table with Barbara Bush, who talks about, you know... In my day, and the kids, and I don't want any of those frilly flowers in the park. And, yeah. you know, just, just, it's a complete joke. Yeah. Um, such chaos. And then the orgy comes Obi, downstairs. Obi, yeah. 
right? Obi and Grace. Oh, yeah, yeah Obi and Grace yeah. show up. Yeah. And Grace knows her. And that's it. That hurts me too, because I'm like, Grace is a part of this world, and we're just acting all brand new on this bitch the entire time. Yeah. Like, how do we have so little tea about her? I know. The Keith Herring penis <laughs> hanging around. Oh, the stairs. Oh, it was so good. I love this too. Was definitely like, the You're best. one of those take the shoes off people, are you? And she's yeah. like, uh, no, we are not. We are not. She's like, I don't understand people's dirty feet. And I was like, oh, and the yeah, whole film thing with Audrey, like all these, like. And as someone who is like from a no shoe household, mm -hmm. I'm just like, what do you, girl, you live in New York. Your yeah. dirty shoes have touched human feces on that street, Back. rat droppings and garbage juice. And you want to trot through my home in them mm -hmm. on my nice silk rug? Absolutely not. And I live in Los Angeles, which is about like a tenth as filthy as New York. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, man. Okay, grandma. Okay, yeah. boomer. What the whole ending of that? It was just like Max comes downstairs and then the orgy comes downstairs. <laughs> and, and the drug dealer's there with the Molly and they're like, oh, it's confection sugar. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And then, like, the friend walks out with the friggin' giant turkey and then walks back in. Like, I was just like, chaos. We love it. I loved, I did. I loved this whole sequence. And I really do think whenever Gideon and ex husband, whatever his name is, um, I never whenever remember. they're on this show, I feel like it's better. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Like, I feel like it's elevated and. This whole sequence, I felt like the showrunners were having so much fun with it and just creating all these hijinks. And even though it was ridiculous, like I was enjoying myself watching this iteration of Gossip Girl. And I haven't really been enjoying myself as much, you know? Absolutely. I yeah. agree. I was like, this is what's missing is this weird world, this weird chaos. Yeah. And I agree that Gideon and uh, his ex-husband, Max's dad, are two of the best parents on this show. Yeah. I loved Davis until he turned out to be the worst. Yeah. You know? So. Uh, and the thing is about that storyline is, like, we still have him in the show, like, show up. And I'm just like, yo, you can't create, like, this whole character and, like, not figure out a way to, like, fix and or redeem it. Correct. And keep him on the show. Like he should be dead because this is like you're yeah. setting up a subject matter that nobody wants to participate in. And the so only the way to do that, thing last season, you know, yeah. you gotta figure it out. Just like how you got rid of the teacher last season, you gotta get rid of her dad. Or you gotta backpedal, which is something that people will be so mad about. Yeah. yeah. Because then it does the whole I fake claimed, like, I think they're struggling with that. They got to be struggling with that in some way because I'm over here like, why is Davis still here? Yeah. I know. The fact that he showed up in the first episode, I was like, whoa. Like, he needs to be doing time somewhere, y'all. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, ugh, it's a rough one. They picked a, they, they went a really dark, hard direction. They and, did. And, because, like, making his, like, Julian's father a rapist and convicting him and him admitting it and, like, if you're you, gonna, you got to own it. You have to own that decision exactly. that you made. If I'm not gonna, against I'm them not doing that, but if they're going to do it, you got to live with what the decisions that you made. You, you know? can't have him back. No. no. You can't have him back. You better reintroduce him seasons later fresh out of a jail charge on some Zen shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, constantly trying to make amends or something. Exactly. I don't know. I don't even exactly. know how you bring him back. And like, no one will still forgive him, but like, right. you know, you can't just like expect her of all people. Yeah. No. But fathers that we do love are Max's and I think they're yes. going to reconcile you guys. I know. I hope so. I mean, I don't know if I hope so. Cause Gideon is just amazing in so many yes. ways. So I don't know, if, but like, you know, maybe for Max's sake to have them back together, I think that would. Yeah. Be and the thing is, like, unlike Davis, their storyline is redeemable because what yeah. happened is, like, when they got together, Gideon was someone else. And this happens in some marriages. Yeah. And, like, 
you know, and then he figured out who he really was. And he's like, well, is this still the person I fell in love with? I, you know, like it's not quite the same, but it is. And they've gone their separate ways and they've had some space and time to really appreciate each other. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are going to get a divorce. And when they go to sign those papers, they realize they don't want to. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they reconcile. And neither but one of them did, like, no did. No one did any of that. And they're just like, they realize they love each other and they want, they like, we're like, let's do it. And his dad, um, the one who's there, I can't remember his name, has this moment with that woman when she kicks him out of the house. And he, I think that was his moment of realization of what he like where he's been mentally and then now where he is now yeah. that he's grown through it. And then when he took that wig off, cause he thought Gideon cut his hair and he was wow. like, Oh my God, no. And he was like, it's a wig, you know? And he like takes it yeah. off and they have a beautiful moment together. I was like, please get back together. Yeah. I think definitely I was worried at first because this was him like trying to change Gideon back to like, being the more straight, less effeminate version of Gideon. Mm -hmm. And then you realize at the end, or he has the self-realization at the end. Like, I love this man for who he is. And I'm not going to get, let this lady walk all over our life and what we made of ourselves. So I thought that was a really special moment. Yeah. Um, that's what, that's exactly what I think it is, Sean. It's him realizing like, Actually, I'm very proud of my life and my people and my choices. And you can GTFO. Like, that's just how it felt. And I think he needed to get there all last season. Because the entire time I was like, whoa, buddy. Like, you can't just blow up your whole marriage over this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a conversation you have. Not a, I can't be with you if you want to dress like this. Like. Yeah. Come on. Here's a story arc in this show that actually feels earned because we've seen it. Like we've seen them grow. We've seen them change and their ups and downs and everything. And this realization that he has is it feels earned. Like, okay, I'm ready for it now. I'm so happy that it happened, but we're not seeing that with all of these other characters. We're seeing lots of conflict and resolution and, not a lot of earning of, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. We will see where they go. Cause we'll now we have Grace lecturing Obi to be a part of his fan friendships again. And Monet being even more powerful because of the video of her pushing her in the thing. So what's Julian? It's like the dun 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 of the episode was what's Julian going to do. Yeah. And I was like, is this a dun dun dun? Right. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I was like, am I happy the triad is out? No, because I think they've treated him like garbage and I don't like it. And now Monet and this whole thing. So I'm like, the best, the best moment. They should have just ended it on the dad's kissing. Like the end. Um, I thought so for, as far as like these first two episodes together, I think this was a much stronger start for Gossip Girl than season one. Yes. I think we're in a good place. I think it's it's closed storylines. It's setting up storylines in a really fun way. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to the season, which I don't think I could have said last season. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially Honestly. for me to figure out who this teacher is. Mm-hmm. Yes. he's He's too weird for me. And um, I'm so glad this throuple drama is like closed. Closed. Yeah, just tired of it. Let's just Move let's on. just be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm over the throuple. I'm just over it in general. Like w- they're coming out. I was just like, can they break up like now? <laughs> like they've already they've told everyone that they're a couple now that I, I want them to break up because I'm over it. I don't like that storyline. Um. Honestly, I do like where this show is going right now, and I I hope it continues to grow. I think if Julian and Zoya are not enemies and at each other's throats anymore, then we're in a good place. Yes. Yes. Agreed. And we can allow- I'm not fighting over Obi. Oh, my God. Obi. Obi. Of all people. I'm going to give you my Wednesday Adams for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, great show. it's a great show um but yeah other than that here's to episode three next week guys Woo. 
Um, uh, before we sign off, Sean, where can everyone find you when you're not on Smells Like Teen Angst? When I am not on Smells Like Teen Angst talking about Gossip Girl, uh, I'm over on my channel, Lost in the Real, uh, where I talk about movies, TV. I love to talk about hidden gems. Uh, right now, I'm kind of concentrating on all the uh, Oscars, like the Oscar award season movies. Uh, uh, so, yeah, check me out there. Awesome. Kiki, where can people find you when you're not here? Um, smells like teen angst, duh. duh. But you know, I also play D D on Q Times at Tuesday at 7 30 p.m. PST. Come hang out with us, Blackness and Dragons. I have a fun thing for you. Boom! Blackness Ooh. and Dragons. Blackness and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm Sarah, and I'm always here on Smells Like Teen Angst. This is where I hide forever and always. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll see you next week for episode yeah. three. How do the kids do it? XOXO. XOXO. <laughs> uh, XOXO. <laughs>